Well, the left normally responds to terror attacks and mass shootings with calls to do something about gun violence. Well, they're rarely clear on what doing something means. Most of us understand what it means, which is if the left had its way, only the government and the bodyguards who protect rich liberals would have guns. The left is starting to say pretty much that out loud. The New York Times today, columnist Brett Stevens wrote a piece entitled, Repeal the Second Amendment. On Facebook, Michael Moore proposed, quote, a new amendment to our Constitution that repeals the ancient and outdated Second Amendment. The Nation magazine tweeted out a piece titled, The Second Amendment was never meant to protect an individual's right to a gun. Avery Gardner works for one of the best-known gun control groups, the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence, and she joins it's us tonight. Thanks all for coming on. Thanks, Tucker. Great to be here. So you all filed, I think, a friend of the court brief the last time this came before the Supreme Court and argued that the Second Amendment does not, in fact, protect individual gun ownership. It's been interpreted that way in two different decisions, as you well know. Do you think that Americans have a constitutional right to own firearms? The Supreme Court has said that Americans who are law-abiding and safe can have a gun in their home. I respect that. I'm a lawyer by training, and I respect what the Supreme Court tells us about the Constitution and what it means. We at the Brady Campaign do not want to take away the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding people. What we want to do is make it much more difficult for dangerous people, for criminals, to have guns and have easy access to them. That's what we think is the common sense solution here. So you all um, obviously have a lot to say about what we saw in Las Vegas Sunday night, raising money on it. A lot of people on the left are raising a lot of money on this. What legislative solutions that you're proposing would have prevented what we saw, the tragedy we saw on Sunday night? One of the most important things we need to do as a nation is improve our background check system, but based on what we know right now, that might not have stopped this shooter from acquiring his guns. That is, though, the most important piece of legislation that we should be talking about as a nation. You know, okay. Tucker, 90 percent of Americans support improving the background okay. check system. I don't want to do a segment on polling. I want to do a segment on what happened, the tragedy, one of the largest mass shootings ever uh, on Sunday the night. Deadliest, yes. Right. So you're seeing people, and Brady Campaign included, I was just on your website, saying, you know, we need to do something. What would have prevented that? We don't know all of the facts about this shooting. We know yet, a lot, so of, we we know a we lot know of facts lot. about sure. the shooting. So well, what would so have prevented it? So a couple of things. It? First, yeah. it appears that the shooter used these bump stocks. What those do is turn another kind of a weapon into the functional equivalent of a machine gun. If we had regulation, if we had stricter control of those bump stocks, maybe fewer people would have died. Maybe, another, maybe more would have died, actually, because if you talk maybe, to people who know a lot about guns, they say, you know, pros don't even fire on fully automatic because you can't they, hit anything. So, but they they that, make that's them very inaccurate. So look, I'm not defending one. bump stocks. I'm just saying, no, let's, let's be real. That, okay. you know, okay. So, let, let but what would have prevented example. it? There's, okay, a, yeah, please. there's something else that is a common thread through a lot of these shootings, and that is large capacity magazines. What we see in, in many of these shootings is that the killer is able to fire 20, 30, 40, or hundreds of bullets, and in many cases doing so with dozens and dozens before having to reload. These large capacity magazines aren't used in hunting. They aren't supported by most responsible gun owners. But, so we should well, I don't look know at, if you know what, if whether it's supported at, by most responsible gun I mean, look, this guy had dozens of full magazines left over. His problem was not that he didn't have enough ammunition. It takes just a second to switch out a magazine, as you know. I mean, uh, we can debate that, but but is there is there an answer? Those aren't answers, as you know. You're smart. Like, is there <laughs> anything you. that would have prevented this? Everyone's jumping up and down and saying we could have prevented this if only Congress had the will. And I'm you asking know, you a very sure. straightforward question. What could Congress have done to pre have prevented this? We shouldn't, as a nation, be focused on what could have prevented the last shooting. We need to be focused on what could prevent the next well, shooting. We've had a bunch of mass shootings, okay, sure. and it's, they're terrifying, and they really hurt the they're country, and they kill you, people. They so, do. Knowing what they all have in common, you've looked at you do this for a living. I do. Let's just take the last, I don't know, ten. What laws should be on the books that would have prevented those? It's just a real question. So I'm, no, I'm not baiting you or trapping you. You're not. I'm happy to answer it. Yeah. So the Virginia Tech shooting is a great example of exactly the sort of situation you're talking about okay, there. Okay, that was 10 years ago. We've had a lot of shootings. Okay. We, we've had many, but right. you asked for an example. I'd like to give you okay. one. In that case, we found out that there were gaps in our background check system, and Congress passed a law called the Nix Improvement Act, which was signed by President Bush, 
to encourage states to get better data into the background check system, data that might have stopped that shooter from acquiring okay. his gun. So okay. we know Maybe. there is legislation. But I mean, the truth is, as you know, most look, Cook County did a study on this, the biggest study ever done. It was 2013. Cook County is the county that, where Chicago is, but one of the highest murder rates in the Western Hemisphere. And they found, you know what percentage of criminals had bought their gun in a place that could even offer a background check? Less than 2%. So it's irrelevant. They got it from straw purchasers, which are never sure. prosecuted by DOJ, as you know. And they should be. They, uh, they should be. They haven't been. They stole them. I mean, they're criminals. Background checks would have not prevented any crimes in Chicago based on that survey. Really? So, like, that, well, is that all you have? <laughs> no, I'm, back, seri I'm serious. Sure. Background checks have blocked three million sales of gun, attempted sales of guns. But we still have all these guns. mass shootings, and we still have we all do. these shootings across the country. But the so fact like, that a solution isn't going to stop all gun violence doesn't mean it isn't worth pursuing. But, but look, but stopping gun deaths okay. is a goal worthy of our great nation. Okay, it we need is, to make but this a safer what, what bothers me is that the Brady campaign, using misleading statistics, pretends that it has the answer. And that the only reason that we're not getting to that answer is because the evil people over at the NRA are somehow getting rich, making America more dangerous. And it's just a lie. There's no obvious answer, and you know it. And this is a really complex, confusing, tragic situation, and no one really knows what to do about these mass shooters, unless you've got some secret that you haven't revealed, do you? Tucker, I don't like being called a liar. Let me tell you how this works, right? We need a much more comprehensive, stronger system of background checks in this country. It starts by expanding background checks to all gun sales. One in five guns in America today is sold without a background check. Here's what that means. That means that a convicted felon getting out of jail tomorrow could go and buy a gun from a private okay, seller without but, a background check. But as check. I just said, that's How does not that what make actually happens. That's it's not, not what, what happens in these happens. circumstances. It's not what's happened in any of these mass shootings, and it's not what happens in crime. We have the numbers on this. That's not, look, I'm not arguing even against it. I'm just saying that is not relevant to the crime sure. and the murders that are taking place with guns in America right now. In, there was a massacre in Charleston in a church a couple of years ago. Go. There was. That was by a shooter who got a gun because of what's called the Charleston loophole. The FBI needed another day to, to determine whether or not he was eligible to buy a gun, and it turned out that he wasn't. But because under federal law, he could go ahead and get that gun after three business days had expired, he got his gun, okay. and he went and killed but, a lot of people. Let's, so let's it's another honest. example. This was a lunatic racist who wanted to kill people, was dead set on it, and you know for a fact it's pretty easy to buy a gun criminally because there are hundreds of millions of guns in America. So this is my last question to you. That's the bottom line truth, and you know it better than anybody because you do it for a living. There are hundreds of millions of guns, hundreds of millions of high-capacity magazines. What do you do about that? Are you going to try and, because like no law short of taking those away from citizens is ever going to have a meaningful effect. Are you willing to talk about your real desire, which is to take guns away from people? I do not want to take guns away from law-abiding Americans. Look, we have a tradition, a history, a culture of hunting. We have a tradition and a history for many people of shooting sports of other kinds. And of self-protection. And, and we have a Second Amendment. Yeah. There is nothing that we want more than to focus on keeping guns out of the hands of dangerous people, keeping guns out of the hands of criminals. Good. That's well, what we're focused I'm, I'm on. I'm totally for that. I just the overstatement and the pretending that we could just fix everything if we were all people of goodwill. It's just that's just not true, and you know it. I don't know how to stop every gun death in America, but okay. I know how we could make it a lot better, and that's what we need to do as a nation. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you.